Broadcom Earnings. Dan, man, this this company is just an absolute machine in in the amount of um, goodness that it it brings to the table uh, in terms of, of of earnings. I mean, they pretty much knocked it uh, out of the park. I'm stalling to find my notes here. <laughs> Yeah, you know, no, it's why. No, no, you listen, know. they you uh, they met on top line and I don't know why some some publications said that they beat it. They beat. I mean, it was eight point nine three on an eight point nine expectation, uh, but they you know beat on profits. Ten forty five versus ten twenty nine. Then they paid a four dollar and sixty cent dividend. OK, think about that. And then they did a much like 800 a share. <laughs> they, they did a better, better than expected uh, Q1. I am unaware of anybody, but I think maybe Lattice that did a a heavy duty guide into the future. Now, the company is 79% semiconductors uh, and 21% in software across uh, CA, Brocade, and um, their security offerings. Uh, semiconductors, I mean, grew an astonishing 26%. Uh, and, you know, we've seen Intel, we've seen uh, AMD, we've seen just a multitude of companies come out there. And that's astonishing growth. And why is that? Well, first of all, they are a supplier to Apple uh, in terms of RF and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And they... Uh, even though that might be a little bit at risk, given the chaos in Apple's factories in in North China, but it's because they're heavy duty into hyperscalers and data centers. And it appears, and we saw this with HPE, we saw this with Dell, and we're seeing this with IBM, the enterprise continues to load up. And that's more than just for some, it's clearing out the backlogs. For others, there's going to be continued demand. So, for instance, with HPE, right, Antonio talked about, yeah, we cleared a lot of backlog, but guess what? Our size of our backlog is basically the same, right? And that just means there's net new uh, orders that, uh, that, are, that, that are coming in. Uh, and it appears, uh, because the company did point out hyperscalers, that the hyperscalers are in another uh, consuming mode, right? What they do is they buy for about three quarters and they trail it off for, for two. And you're asking, well, why is that? All the SaaS stuff is going down. Well, guess what? They, they're also the backbone for all consumer services. And while the consumer hardware market is in the toilet, I don't see any lack of demand in consumer uh, services on, online, whether it be you know, Gmail for consumers uh, any flavor of TikTok that's out there, that's all riding on the back uh, in, a, in, a, in a giant uh, data center. VMware deal looks like it's on track without any uh, expected surprises. You know, and I think uh, Broadcom CEO Hawk Tan is doing an exceptional job communicating to the customers, the channel, and the ecosystem partners. You know, uh, Hawk doesn't, like to hasn't communicated a lot historically and you can be a lot more insular when you're just doing semiconductors but uh customers brought up issues and he's been on planes trains and automobiles to austin uh, right he did he came to austin and we had a nice uh, nice breakfast uh together and had a wonderful uh discussion he's a very direct guy he's very honest uh, I, I love the conversation. So um, I think that they're, you know, they could have done a little bit earlier, but hats off to them for really stepping it up. I don't think there is a week that goes that there's not a a blog from uh, from Hawk Tan. Or you about Hawk Tan. Have you checked out Pat's Forbes column? Because if you haven't, you should. He's had some really good insights there. You know, you know, it's our job sometimes to take a position. And the market, the popular sentiment among industry analysts has been kind of one-sided on this particular topic. And um, I know we're talking about earnings, 
but I just want to be very specific. When it comes to the VMware deal, the industry side has been incredibly jaded about the potential that Broadcom has. I think you and I are outsiders um, a little bit, but we see it differently. And we see the fact that, you know, there's been some real success with CA. There's been some growth in semantic. You've got a business that knows how to operate, knows how to be efficient, knows how to put off cash. I tweeted after the earnings came out yesterday. I said, you know, part of the reason I feel optimistic about VMware is this is a company that knows how to perform in any market, meaning mm-hmm. good market, bad market. It knows how to perform. Is he shrewd in his business uh, decisions? Yes. Are most great companies run by people that are pretty shrewd in their business decisions? Yes. Is a business's purpose to be profitable? Yes. If your business isn't designed to make a profit, then you're doing something wrong. And if your business doesn't figure out how to run better during different economic cycles, then you're not leading the company the way you should. These are things that Hawk is very good at. And this, by the way, is why the investor community love Hawk 10 and love uh, Broadcom. Um, on the industry side, though, we tend to be a little more ephemeral about things. We want to, it's a little more about the touchy feely. Well, to his credit, the touchy feely here has been the most touchy feely I've ever seen from Hawk in terms of, let me tell you what I'm thinking about. Let me tell you about what we're doing about pricing. Let me tell you what we're going to do about innovation. So I guess while you're certainly entitled out there to your opinion that the company is going to run VMware into the ground or it's going to screw up the market for it, I would actually argue VMware was um, already kind of in a, a bit of a stagnant path, and it actually has a chance right now to use this moment as an as a opportunity to reverse course, regain momentum, and really take advantage of this multi-cloud era. Now, again, is it different than the company's current DNA? Sure. Does it mean that it does it mean a company can't change? Uh, no. And I think that's what you and I are both really saying is that it seems to us, based upon the uh, what we're hearing from CEO Hawk Tam, what we're hearing from the leaders of their software groups that we work with, like Greg Lockco and Mainframe, who have been there, who's been other places, who love the company, by the way, that this is moving in the right direction. So I say, you know, keep your eyes on this company. But while that deal is being closed, clearly the growth in infrastructure, the demand for enterprise is very robust. You know, the only thing that maybe left a question mark was they didn't give full year guidance due to some lacking visibility, something they typically do. Going forward, I think they will. All right, onward, Patrick, uh, Broadcom, good quarter. Wow, that was a, that was a lot. 